Today is Yeezy release time and I will be reviewing a Yeezy for the occasion. So the Yeezy 350 V2 or version 2 Boost is out. Actually, they don't even call it V2 on the packaging. This is the packaging of it. Slightly different than what we're used to see uh, for the uh, Yeezy 350s because this time around it's full of all these different uh, stickers and stuff. Well, stickers, prints, and it doesn't open up this way like the first Yeezy releases did, but instead you slide it out. And then it kind of has a block mechanism that blocks the box from going out further. I mean, you could kind of unblock it. There's a little thing down there to pull, like a tab, and then you could just kind of slide it all the way open. But anyway, this is how the shoe looks. First view of the shoe. Now, what I've noticed, um, let's get both of them out of the box. Now the paper is similar to the paper that we have in the first edition of Yeezy's, kind of this very beigey or beluga looking color. Uh, Kanye likes his beluga, I guess. But anyway, what I've noticed on photos, it's really hard to photograph this particular color because it is neon. And uh, on camera it results as kind of like a pale washed out orange, when indeed Mm, it's super intense and super super illuminated so let me see if I manage to like show it to you guys in different light intensities if the orange actually pops up like it really is so there you go the closer I come to the camera the more you can see how intense it is it's super intense and I'm loving this orange and then it, and it's not printed but it is indeed knitted within the texture of the shoe so it goes around and then we have it on the other side as well and then the actual pattern of the prime knit you could see the perforations and the knit there is even here like orange poking through poking through this kind of gray green mossy green structure we have a lot of orange poking through I'm really liking this uh, new pattern I mean I love colors in general so I'm happy that finally we get a bit of color within the, the Yeezy family and uh, as far as the shoe itself is concerned, it is different. It's a different structure. It also costs more than the first Yeezys. Um, what is different about it? Well, first of all, the sole. Here I have the 350 Pirate Black version of the Yeezy. Uh, you could see the difference in the sole already. Very different. Super different. Technique used to make it, pattern, the perforations, where you can see the boost, where not, poking through, semi-translucent sole. What is super interesting is this one was made out of kind of one mold. Um, this side that looks very Star Wars-y, and then at the bottom we have this more robust rubber there, and in this section here, but the rest is kind of one mold. Here it's a different story. Here we have the sole cut and glued together right here at the bottom and then going upwards on the back. So it's as if like this bit, you could kind of open it up like that and then like peel off the entire sole at the bottom because you could see there's a line right there going through, which is, and then going up here, around there, and then down there again and then running all the way through to the front up here and then down there again. Semi-translucent and this also makes it super soft and rubbery. Now I wonder, and I've been asking myself this question, I don't know, you know, when you start kind of really wearing this shoe, how it's gonna react to, to use because if this doesn't look super kind of, uh, it doesn't look like it's well, I don't know. I have the feeling it could detach when you wear it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the glue used or whatever technique was used to kind of attach the bottom part to the upper part. Maybe it's done super well and it's never gonna detach. But I have the feeling like just by pressing it, it bends so much. I'm afraid it might pop open to be honest with you guys. 
Only time will tell as we start using them. The inside, okay, so you take out this uh, tissue paper and the sole is detachable, again, like in the other, in the first version of the Yeezy. And then we have the perforated sole here where you could see the boost popping through. And this is how the inlay looks like. It's kind of a very light mouse gray color and texture to it. And then we have Adidas V Tree Foil and Yeezy. On the back, it's kind of a off-white, grayish white, super light gray, again with the Adidas Tree Foil and logo and a slight pattern texture to it to give more comfort to the foot. Let me put it back in. Another thing I've noticed, uh, and that's something that a lot of people have been com complaining about. I personally don't find it at all uh, ugly, but a lot of people don't like it. I've been telling me, like, Deiko, what do you think about the width of this shoe? Because the sole, kind of when you wear them, it, it opens up. You see there's like kind of this extra outpoking of the sole, which we already had with the 350 first edition, but this time around it's way bigger. It's more pronounced. It's more wide and I can see how to some people that might kind of result as a weird um, ugly deformation or like kind of morphing of the foot almost like mutant type of foot morphing into something else I personally like this game I personally like this sort of experimentation with proportions uh, in fact for those of you who know me and who follow me on my channel uh, you already have seen me wearing, you know, Rick Owens cargo sandals, uh, the Rick Owens Mastodon. Uh, you could check out those reviews in the description box down below. I can post links to them. Um, I have worn um, the Oswegos and the trails, uh, the, 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 the trailers from uh, Raph Simmons as well. And they're really chunky and big. And they kind of sometimes even look cloggy, almost like a Walt Disney cartoon-esque sort of shoe that Mickey Mouse or Minnie would wear. But I understand kind of the aesthetic behind it and the need to sometimes like go beyond the sleekness of, of, a, of what a sneaker is. And I think in general, I mean, I'm wearing a Yeezy a season one um, hoodie right now and, and I'm talking about a Yeezy shoe. So there's a certain type of aesthetic and I totally get it and I get where Kanye is heading to with this. Um, but I'm super pleasantly surprised that it kind of is kind of going in another more pop direction as well from time to time that we are allowed a little bit of color from time to time, that the soul does kind of expand and transform into something different that kind of gives us a different perspective on aesthetic. And uh, pushing that boundary to me means a lot. So I applaud the version two of the Yeezy. Actually, it is, I have to say, to date my favorite one. I know the first is always the first and the best, but this one kind of gives me hope that if they do indeed go on with more, that it's, with more Yeezys, with more collaboration, that Adidas and, you know, Kanye kind of go through more things and more processes and more evolution of it, that we're going to get to see more experimentations in the future. And I'm, I'm all open for it. I, I'm welcoming it, actually, because I, if there's something I hate, it's sticking to routine. Like, break out of the routine and try to figure out what else is there new, you know? And what else can kind of make you change your perception of, of not just wearing a shoe, but experiencing design in general. Uh, so that would include the garments you're wearing, the type of fragrance you're using, uh, type of hair color you decide to have or not have, what sort of jewelry to have or not to have, watch, yes, no, uh, the cut of uh, your garments. It should all be constantly questioned, especially youth should constantly question and, and, and change and evolve and try new things. Because if you don't try it now, when the hell are you going to try it? You got to try things out. And then when you know, like, kind of what you can settle down with, well, try even more, you know, <laughs> continue asking yourself and pointing yourself the question, how far can you push yourself? This is a, I have to admit also, it's a very shy attempt at pushing it a little bit, uh, pushing that boundary just a little bit further, but it's still an attempt. And I applaud that attempt and that kind of willpower that maybe something could change for a more interesting and different approach. I'm not saying this was an interesting, I'm loving the Yeezy 350 for sure, but I'm also loving change. And uh, as far as the waves, the little bumpy waves here are concerned, they're also differently positioned than they used to be. And also the distance between these little ribs 
is in some places closer and some further away. So we have like a really wavy pattern of the shoe in general. Where it's very visible and noticeable is here. And I think this, is be, this will be an interesting point for kind of figuring out fakes from non-fakes. Who knows in the future, but you see the original has these three ribs there. And it is quite a bit of a slot here that's empty. And then we got the tight ribs following right up there. I do believe, I mean, who knows? You know, there's a lot of fakes out there, but I'm sure that some fakes are going to have, are not going to have this slot right there between these two, between these, you know, the first three ribs and the other ribs to follow. So that's something to look after if you want to authenticate your shoe or not, whatever. And you've got the Supply 350 there. It's all a prime knit. It's not printed, which makes it even more exceptional to me. This whole piping situation going on here is great. We got microfiber material on the inside. I do not think that this is leather on the tongue, but it's super soft and it makes the shoe extremely comfortable. Oh yeah, and another thing I didn't uh, mention before, which is fascinating, well fascinating. It's a nice little touch and detail are the three stripes here on the back. So you have these three stripes and this is indeed, it looks like a print, but it could be woven. It's not a plastified print. It definitely can't wash off or rub off or break or anything. So it's really in the texture of this acrylic fabric in there. And they're super soft and very padded at the heel. What is also fascinating to me, they go really outwards in the back. Now, very different from the uh, 350 Pirate Black edition, for example. We have this kind of very straight cut and just a slight bump going outwards. And here we have this ginormous curve going out and then back again. It's very, very, um, let's throw this out of the tag. It's very, very architectural, I would say, super organic. It looks very biological, almost like a sort of weird uh, plankton uh, living creature or something from the deep uh, ocean. Um, and it is slightly reminiscent, maybe perhaps of Nike in a way too, you know, which I'm talking about, where you're kind of very much to the front but, uh, and I've heard people complaining about that structure. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm fine. Again, the deformation or the slight deformation of forms that kind of gives us a different perspective on silhouettes of the foot is always very welcome by me. So guys, thank you so much for watching this review of the Yeezy 350 Boost version 2, The Supply. I hope you liked it. If you have, please do thumb it up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. No matter what shoe you decide to wear and how much they criticize you for it, whether because you're too young to wear something that people might say, that's so expensive, where'd you get your money to get it? Or just because you want to wear something that's trash and everybody says, that's so out of style. Why don't you wear something else? Forget about what they say. Let it in there, out there, and never give up on love. Love you. Bye.